What if we were to tell you that we could increase TJX's profits by $600,000 through just five additional stores in the greater Boston area, accumulating to $70 million through all of our expansions in all of TJX stores over the United States? If you're, you're hired. <laughs> if interested, stay tuned to stay consignment our proposal and yeah, let's get into it. Uh, Max Vintage will, is going to attract a younger customer base to TJX stores by selling consigned and vintage items from Say Consignment's established network of consigners. Um, in this presentation, we will be covering the business model of Say Consignment and uh, how we propose to work with TJX. Uh, we will be going over our supply chain and proposed supply chain, our financial plan for working with TJX, a market we will be conducting market analysis, going over our marketing plan, and over the HR issues. Uh, first, I would like to describe what consignment is, just so that it makes sense to everyone in the room. Uh, consignment begins when a consigner, somebody with clothes, gives them to a store and they retain the ownership of the clothing until the items are sold in the store. Typically, the consigner receives a portion of what they're sold for and the consignee or the store receives the rest of the money. Um, and this revenue split is typical in the industry. Sometimes it can be 60-40, but it's irrelevant as it doesn't have anything to do with TJX in this business field. Say consignment differs from typical consignment in that we only list our items online. We have very high buying standards, so we're not thrift at all. And the consigner is compen and with our proposed plan with TJX, the consigner will be compensated when the items are sold to TJX and not when they're sold to the end consumer. So I bet you're wondering why buy consignment, why buy vintage clothes rather than going to Macy's or Nordstrom's and getting new clothes right off the rack with the tags on it. Well, first of all, consigned clothing is more affordable since you are not paying the sticker price on the tag. Instead, these are clothes that have been previously worn, but they're still in really great condition. So there's no reason for you not to take advantage of consigned clothing since A, it's good for the environment and B, it's more affordable. So a really great example of vintage clothing that's highly desirable is denim. So, yes. <laughs> denim. Yeah. Look at this. Dress code. So vintage denim is attractive to consumers because it is perfectly distressed in the way that only a well-loved pair of jeans could be. These are jeans that are already worn in. You don't need to worry about wearing them in. And they're hard to find styles because they haven't been produced in the past couple of years. These are actual vintage pairs of jeans that are also of higher quality since I'm sure many of you know that the way that clothing is produced today, it's just not held to as high of a standard as it used to be. So consigned clothing is attractive because it's higher quality, more affordable, and it's more unique. So our business model uh, revolves around four parties, the consigner, us say consignment, uh, TJX, and the TJX customer. So starting with the consigner, they would give their vintage or designer clothing items to us, say consignment, so that we can use those items to build our inventory. Uh, in exchange, the consignment would receive 40% of the sales price if their item is sold to a buyer. Uh, and then for us, uh, TJX would act as a buyer, we act as a supplier in our sort of business, um, and they would purchase items from our inventory to go into TJX stores under the TJ Maxx Vintage label. Uh, in exchange, we keep 60% of the sales revenue that we receive from TJX, and like I said, give the remaining 40% to the consigners. Um, we believe that the 60% 60% uh, 60 40 split would be good for us because it gives enough incentive to consigners to give their clothing items to us, but at the same time, gives us enough to be profitable. Uh, we don't manufacture our own clothing, so since we have such low cost, we think that we can still remain profitable despite only keeping 60% of the revenue. Then not to TJX, they would sell our uh, consigned items on their store floor uh, under the vintage label uh, to the TJX customers. Uh, in exchange, we estimate that on average, the TJX should receive a $25 profit margin for each item of consigned clothing that's sold in store. Um, and that's just an average because uh, each item would vary uh, the profit margin. Um, so what value do we bring to the table? Why does TJX need us say consignment? Well, first of all, say consignment increases TJX's revenue and widens their target market by adding sustainable fashions to their regular inventory. 
This drives environmentally and fashion conscious young women around our age, college age young women, to TJ Maxx stores in the greater Boston area. Say consignment's model of consigned clothes also fits in perfectly with the TJX treasure hunt model since you never know exactly what you're going to find. This makes young women want to go into TJ Maxx stores to see what's available at any given moment. Now, why, are, why does the consumer get out of this? So the consumer is now getting access to unique sustainable fashions more easily through the, our partnership with TJX. This is because they can go straight into a TJ Maxx store, see what's available, try it on, feel it, and they're no longer having to order consigned clothes through online boutiques, only for it to arrive and not fit or look as expected. This saves them time and money since they're no longer paying for shipping and they're no longer waiting for the item to arrive, only for them to possibly return it later on. And we are establishing ourselves as a staple in the consignment <coughs> industry by partnering with TJ Maxx, a retail giant that has great brand recognition. So this allows us to reach the new generation of consumers, which is college-age young women. Although we're specifically focusing on college-age young women in the greater Boston area, the potential for growth is tremendous, as we will discuss later on my presentation. So the Safe and Sound financial model is based on the assumption that we would be sending about 200 items uh, to TJX in every shipment. And we estimate that we'd be sending 14 shipments per year to each participating TJX store. And we came upon that number because we know that TJX completely uh, overturns their, in their inventory and store up 14 times per year. So that gave us the 14 times number. Uh, as for our revenues and expenses, uh, we expect our revenues to grow from $21,000 in the fall of 2020, which is the first six month period we'll be in full operation, to about $210,000 in 2022. And that's only taking 60% of the total revenue our sales. Uh, as for our expenses, uh, we anticipate about $60,000 of startup costs during uh, spring of 2020, which is our startup period, um, and we'll use a combination of debt and equity to cover those startup costs. As for TJX, like I said before, we estimate about a $25 uh, profit margin per item sold on average, um, and so that would translate to $70,000 in profit per year for each store that's partnering with us. Uh, and by 2022, we project to be in five stores, so that would mean uh, TJX would gain a $350,000 profit in the year of 2022. And that's not counting the increased foot traffic that should account for many more additional sales on the normal items in TJX stores. Um, next, the supply chain of say consignment, will be, I will be describing. Um, say consignment has a 10,000 square foot warehouse in Framingham, Massachusetts. Uh, which has enough space for office space, inventory, and room for growth into this project with TJX, so we don't foresee having to move or expand into a large warehouse anytime soon. Um, <clears throat> the next step of the supply chain is when consigners print labels to ship their clothing to the Say Consignment Warehouse. They're able to do this at the Say Consignment website through a portal that we've created for consigners to use so they can print out their labels, track the status of the acceptance of their items, whether they're accepted or rejected, uh, along with descriptions why the items were accepted or rejected, and then when the items are sold to TJX, the consigners will be notified how much they're being compensated. And this is all done through the portal. Um, and lastly, uh, say consignment will work with TJX to universally inventory items, so we will try to work with TJX to, when we in individually inventory our items, um, we'll do it in a way which is compatible with TJX's system, so that way they don't have to do everything over again. So we'll be saving their employees time, uh, as well as us using the same amount of time to inventory. Uh, the initial shipments we made by the Say Consignment team um, in the first couple years of service, just within the Boston area, uh, we purchased a company van that we can use to drive the shipments, the bi-monthly shipments, to um, the TJX stores in the Boston area. Uh, later, as we expand to more stores in the U.S., we'll switch to UPS shipping um, to cover getting our items across the country. Um, TJX will be responsible for pricing the items and displaying the inventory. However, we will provide recommended prices to increase TJX's profit margins and what we think customers will be willing to pay for items. 
and the end of the supply chain is finally reached when the customer falls in love with the product in the TGFX store, puts it on, and makes the purchase. So now I talked about our market a little bit. Um, so our total available market, our TAM, would be the population of the U.S., about uh, 330 million people. Um, but if you filter that for uh, location, so we just start in Boston, in the city, so not even the um, greater metro area, but in the city of Boston, who are women, ages 15 to 24, which is a new market for TGX. We know that they have normally been getting women about 25 to 54, so now we're introducing a younger clientele. These women are middle to middle high income. We use an estimate uh, using data that at Boston University and Northeastern University, the two biggest schools close to our target locations, that the average household income of their parents is over $150,000. So about three-fourths of the women that go to these schools have enough um, money to spend at TJX. And then we came to a serviceable oil market of about 42,000 women. And then given that not everyone is looking for sustainable fashion or um, is interested in these vintage clothes, we estimate that about 15,000 women would be able to come to the store. That may seem small, but this is for one location in one store. So imagine if you could tell the manager of the TJ Maxx on Newberry Street that 15,000 more women will come to your store because of our amazing product. So this is how we determined our target market. We also, like I said before, these women, um, they are younger, they're usually students. These are the people that want vintage clothes. People ages 55 don't want them, they're the ones supplying them. So we thought that people like their kids would be the ones wanting to wear a vintage denim jacket. Um, also, these women are interested in um, sustainability because it's vintage. We're giving new life to these products rather than um, using a lot of pollution to create fast one-time wear clothes. We're giving them a new life. And we also thought that they're um, just fashion conscious. They're looking for the next style. We can provide that for them. So I gave you guys a little map. Um, the two concentric circles is our first location. This is the TJ Maxx on Newberry Street. And we thought that within a few years, with success, we can expand to the rest of the Boston market, which would be a total of five stores. Once we have Boston, who knows, maybe New York, LA, and the whole uh, country. All 1,000 stores. Yeah, all 1,000 stores. So talk about marketing a little bit. Um, the Biggest part of marketing would be how we would advertise. Considering that we're a small firm, we thought that social media marketing would be the best way to reach these girls, especially because over 90% of women ages 15-24 do use Instagram. So here's an example of what a TJ Maxx post would look like. Um, this was taken from their Instagram account currently. So we would suggest to do, we'd work in a team with their advertisers to potentially create a new account under Max Vintage that would be featured on the TJ Max page. So we could create posts using like local um, models that would be relatively inexpensive if they're pretty young to get these really awesome photos and get people excited online about our um, clothing. We could also use native advertisement since we have a successful website. We can put ads on the side that uh, would link them to TJ Max if they want to look at what's available or just telling them that there's something new there. Um, and then another really, really cool way that people have started to advertise their clothing is by using influencers. So these are young women that would really wear these clothing. So there are uh, four women in Boston that are about 21 years old that are called mid-level influencers because they have upwards of 250,000 followers or subscribers on Instagram and YouTube respectively. Um, these women get paid maybe on average $1,000 to sponsor a post, but if it's something as small as just giving them a pair of jeans to wear and tag in the photo, that would cost even less, which is a really, really inexpensive way to get plenty of women that live in the Boston area since these women, this is Gretchen Garrity, and this is Maggie McDonald. They both live in Boston. They went to BU, so they have friends that live in the city. They have followers that live in the city, and by using them and recruiting them to our team to be partners in this really, really cool new marketing campaign, we can try to reach people in the most um, trustworthy way, which is through a friend. Approaches, yeah. yeah. 
Okay, so we created a survey using Qualtrics and distributed it to 36 participants, <coughs> all of whom were between the ages of 16 and 24. Uh, 70 per 72 percent of them were female, and the majority lived nearby to an urban shopping center. So that basically qualifies all of our participants, being that they're all pretty much, for the most part, within our target market. Uh, and then our first question was, have they ever bought or sold from a consignment company? And we saw that 64 percent of our participants had actually done some sort of participation with a consignment company, uh, which is a pretty ideal answer because it shows that the majority of people have do have some prior experience with consignment, so this won't be much of a learning curve. Uh, but at the same time, there is a significant portion of people who have not had exposure to it, so we can take advantage of those people and expand into that market. Uh, next, uh, we asked uh, how much they value sustainability in their purchases. We found that about 80 percent of our participants respond with moderate to high consideration for sustainability, which is really great because it falls right in line with what we're offering with safe consignment, our <coughs> a sustainable solution to accessing uh, really desirable clothing items. Uh, next, we asked how interested they are in thrift shopping or similar experience. Um, we found that 83% responded with moderate to high interest in thrift shopping. And while consignment is definitely not thrift shopping, we think that interest would translate really well because in essence, the very similar experience. Um, yeah. uh, our next question was targeted more towards the TJX shopping uh, business model. Uh, we asked how interested they are in the treasure hunt shopping experience, and we found you know the the results weren't surprising. A very you know strong response to that. Uh, TJX's success with treasure hunt has sort of been a testament already to the success, but we really feel that by adding our consigned items to their inventory, it really boosts that treasure hunt experience even further. Um, and then lastly, we asked how much they consider price when buying clothing, and we had an overwhelming response that they do consider price. 94% had moderate to high value placed on price, which is great for us because we offer these really desirable designer items at a much more affordable price. Okay, so when it comes down to our competition, we were looking at other firms who were offering the same service of consignment, and that gave us a list of these six these six potential competitors, which include Thrive Exchange, Castanet Designer Consignment, Covet, Luxury Resale Network, Boomerang, and Revolve Boutique. Now these are a lot of competitors, so we used two factors of proximity, so how close they were to our store, and also popularity, how well they were known, in order to come to the conclusion that Revolve Boutique was our biggest competitor. <coughs> So we did a SWOT analysis to compare safe consignment to Revolve Boutique, and in the end I'll do a comparison of how we're planning on overcoming this competition. So starting off with our strengths, we have a well-defined market segment as addressed before. So we are addressing women between the ages of 15 to 24 years old, and so our unique selling point within that range is affordability. And that's something that Revolve Boutique will not be able to compete with us in. And also we have an established credibility. So Considering our historical success within this industry, we've been operating for many years, so um, our long-term brand loyalty will also influence the number of customers that we'll be attracting. Now moving into our weaknesses, just like any consignment store, we could have a lack of potential engaging inventory, and also there's a large competitor base, as I mentioned in the previous slide. However, they can be drawn distinct when it comes to the factor of pricing, so it's not as detrimental as you assume. <coughs> And as for our opportunities, we're planning on opening approximately five additional stores within the greater Boston area, and that would be approximately by the year 2022. And as of now, we just have women's items, so we're also planning on expanding into men's items and just more unisex clothing in general. And as for threats, um, we included an improving economy because this means that this might lead to uh, customers having an increase in their disposable income, and so they may deviate from buying more affordable items, but considering that we're addressing a market in which budget is heavily valued, this may not be as much of a threat as we think. And also our second threat is that is the aging relevance and the longevity of our trends. Now moving on to Revolve Boutique, Revolve also has a trusted reputation. It is not the largest, but it is a pretty large consignment store in New England. And their unique selling point differs from ours because they're addressing upscale, they identify as an upscale women's consignment boutique and they're selling luxury items, which leads into their weakness of limited flexibility with their pricing, which again differs from us because we have a unique selling point of affordability. And um, as for their opportunities, 
um, they could have a potential extension into their e-commerce industry. So that could be done by conducting online sales, stuff like that. And as for threats, it's very much similar. They have an extensive amount of competition, so they have to fight to remain relevant. And another uh, threat could be that they need to constantly update their inventory to stay um, trendy and make sure that they're still seasonal within the range. So how are we gonna overcome this competition? So one concern that a TGX representative or what a CEO or just an investor in general might have is, why would you wanna place yourself so close to your competition? So we think we're delving in or we're engaging with strategic placement because drawing on the common example of McDonald's and Burger King, they're right next to each other and so Burger King may not have to do all that market research, invest in that, simply they just need to follow McDonald's and benefit from the same customers. And also understanding the psychology of this, we're addressing women who are hopping in and out of stores trying to find the best price they can. And again, I've mentioned it many times, but our affordability is what we're best at. And so we'll be attracting customers within who value that. All right, and now talk about our human resource issues. So given that we would have a successful um, collaboration with TJ Maxx, creating Max Vintage, we would need to hire a um, contract expert or a lawyer to help us navigate this because as a small company, we could be um, easily taken advantage by TJX, but also we have a lot to gain. We want to ensure that we're protected, but also really, really getting invested in the situation. We also would like to hire um, part-time employees or full-time employees paid hourly to help us. Once we start scaling up with TJX, we're going to need to start processing a lot more inventory. So we would need people to help just filter through, price it, evaluate it, and help with the day-to-day -day activities. Um, to talk about what we have going on so far, we are a small company. Everyone you see up here are the employees. We work in a clan culture. You know, although we have um, a management hierarchy, we share day-to-day -day tasks, and that we're more collaborative than um, managerial, and that we focus more on internal integration than on um, you know, like external factors. So if you go to the next slide, I can show you what our um, our style looks like. I Rather than showing it going vertically, which is a little more imposing, a little more like one person got there, we went a little bit more horizontally. So we have our president, Nathaniel Worth. Um, he's in charge of all the final decisions. Um, so everything big would come through him, although we do have a lot of our own um, ability to make the best judgment in each of our own roles. Then we have Joshua Glickman, our Vice President of Finance, who is in charge of making sure that we're profitable and making sure that we can um, keep track of money coming in and out to make sure that everything's just accounted for. We have Jennifer James, our Vice President of Strategy, keeping tabs on the competition, making sure that we're staying relevant and that we're staying um, competitive. We have Grace Elisa, our Vice President of Development, making sure that our products are really going fashion forward, that we're keeping in mind with our mission. And then myself, Kieran Davis, I am the Vice President of Marketing and of Human Resources. So hiring would go through me, and also I would work with TJX, working on like the marketing projects, and the advertisement, etc. So in conclusion, State Consignment seeks to provide unique, sustainable finds to their consumers through our partnership with TJX. So what does TJX gain from this? TJX is now widening their target market to include young college-aged women in the greater Boston area. So this also keeps them coming back to the store because the safe consignment business model fits in so well with the TJX treasure hunt experience. Customers are going to want to keep going to TJ Maxx to see what's available at any given moment. It's not going to be go in once and then go back a year later just to see because inventory is constantly changing over and consumers are going to want to see what's available each and every time. TJX turns over their inventory. So this is proven to work already for TJ Maxx, so we figure why not expand it and make it an even better concept. Thank you, are there any questions? <laughs> uh, <coughs>